In today's video, you're gonna learn how to program complex chord voicings to single note presses in Ableton Live. Ableton Live does not have a great chord trigger plugin out of the box, but it's possible to get this functionality in Ableton Live, and it's not actually that complicated. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to program a chord trigger in Ableton Live. Hey guys, I'm David from Sunday Sounds, where our focus is equipping, empowering, and inspiring worship keys players and worship leaders to sound amazing and be confident and comfortable in the key software of their choice. Today, I have an Ableton Live tutorial for you. If you're an Ableton Live keys player, especially one who's coming from a main stage background, you're going to want to check this video out because we're gonna be talking about chord triggers not just what they are, but how to achieve them without having to spend hours and hours programming inside of Ableton Live. Now, I got my start in MainStage, which has a built-in chord trigger plugin that's really great. It lets you press a note and then play or program a chord, and it remembers or learns that chord voicing just like that. That functionality does not exist in Ableton Live. Ableton Live has a chord MIDI effect but it's only able to recall one chord voicing at a time. So whatever chord you program is gonna be played, shifted up or down for whatever notes that you press. And that obviously doesn't work for programming lots of complex chord voicings for a song. So I'm gonna teach you how to create a MIDI effect rack that will do all the chord triggering for you, where you can dial in the chords that you would like. It takes a little bit of setup time and understanding how the relationships work between the different effects that we're gonna put into place. But first off, I wanna explain what a chord trigger is and why you might want to use it. So a chord trigger is pretty simple. You play a single note and it triggers a chord. And then you play a different note and it triggers a different chord. Whatever chord you would like, you can place anywhere on the keyboard on a single note. Oftentimes we'll use these in the left hand. So when you play a bass note of a chord uh, or you're playing right hand lead parts, you're still able to trigger full chord voicings in the left hand. And that's the best thing about chord triggers. They free your right hand up to play other important parts higher up on the keyboard. That might be a synth lead part, that might be a go-to piano part. And the reason that this can make such a big difference is because oftentimes if you have a pad sound or something with a slower attack and a longer decay or release time, if you're trying to play a lead part with that pad also attempting to follow, the attack is going to be too slow and the release too long. So that lead part is actually gonna be muddied up by that synth pad sound or whatever else you have going on. So placing those types of sounds in the left hand alone via a chord trigger is a great way to free your right hand up to focus on other parts. We use this technique all the time in literally every song specific patch that we produce for Ableton Live and main stage. Chord triggers are an awesome, awesome tool. They are not a crutch. If you use them correctly, if you program them with intention, then they make it possible for you to do amazing things from the keys position. So let me give you an example of the kind of results that a chord trigger can give for you. I've brought in a warm pad one, which is a preset from our Sunday keys template. It's a great basic meat and potatoes pad sound. It sounds like this. And I'm able to play it across the full range of the keyboard. Now I'm gonna turn on a chord trigger. Now the pads in Sunday Keys come with a feature called Easy Chord, which lets you turn on chord triggers that have already been programmed in the key of your choice via this Easy Chord macro here. So I'm just gonna nudge this up a little bit. And now I have the key of C selected and Easy Chord turned on. So now rather than playing full chord voicings myself, I'm just gonna play octaves or single notes in my left hand. So here's a single note. If I add the octave on top with my thumb, we get some higher notes layered in on top. So here's just the higher note for F and the lower F note. So my right hand is free to play a lead part or to focus on piano or to do something else in the mid range because the chord trigger is handling that pad voicing for me. Now here with easy chord in Sunday keys patches, I'm able to just select a new key with the macro and then all of the chord triggers are automatically shifted where they need to be. So now that I'm in the key of G, all of the chords that are gonna be triggered are gonna be relevant to that key. So I can walk up. And even step out of the key and still find that the chords track. 
So that's the end result of well-programmed chord triggers. They free your right hand up to play other parts. They allow you to achieve denser layered sounds and you can program the chords to do exactly what you need them to do. So now I'm gonna teach you how to do this yourself. We're gonna create a MIDI effect rack that's gonna do this chord triggering for us. Now we're not gonna replicate the full easy chord functionality that is outside of the scope of this video, but if you'd like to check it out for yourself, you can do so inside the Sunday Keys template. Now, let's go over here. I have the stock Ableton Live Grand Piano loaded in. So I don't know that I would normally or very often program a chord trigger for a piano sound. Oftentimes I'll do this for pads or arps and things like that, but I wanted to use a piano because it's really plain to hear what the chord trigger is doing with a sound that's a little bit more direct like this one. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just create an instrument rack to build within. So since I've already got this piano rack here, I'm gonna just right click on it and choose group. And now we have it contained within an instrument rack. So I want to create now a MIDI effect rack before the piano. All the MIDI processing has to happen before any audio processing can happen because the audio, including the instrument plugin that runs the piano sound, is going to respond to the MIDI input. So I'm gonna to go to MIDI effects here inside of Live and I'm gonna drag in a MIDI effect rack right here. Now I'm gonna right click and choose Create Chain. So now I have a single chain right here we're gonna bring in two more plugins. The first is an instance of the pitch plugin, and the second is an instance of the chord plugin. Now, with this, I'm able to dial in a chord. So let's just start here with this C note. So if I want to, I can use the chord plugin to add additional notes on top of that. And if you have used the chord plugin in Ableton Live, you're probably already familiar a little bit with how this works. You can add up to six notes on top of the original root note, and it's measured in half steps. So this would add the second on top, the third, the fourth, the fifth. If I made it 12, it would add the octave, 15, minor. So let's go ahead and just do the one and the five. So I'm gonna add, seven steps up and then we're gonna add an octave on top and then 16 so we have the one the original note five on top the octave above that and then the third above that so this chord is sounding totally fine but the problem is wherever i play on the keyboard that chord trigger is following but i only want it to happen here so this is what we're going to do in the MIDI effect rack, hit the key option right here, and we're going to decrease the layer range so that this is only taking place on C2. Now, anywhere else I play on the keyboard, you can see that red note input. The chord trigger is not being triggered anywhere else outside of that. So I'm gonna name this rack C2. Okay, so I could do whatever else I wanted to do with this chord. Now you may be asking, why did we add an instance of the pitch plug and it's not doing anything, right? That's true, it's just passing through MIDI right now. But sometimes when you have a chord trigger or when you want to program a chord trigger, you actually need to be able to manipulate the input note as well. Let's say that we actually didn't want C2 to be audible at all, but we wanted C2 when played to trigger the chord. Let's say we actually wanted to hear C1. So here we would use this pitch plugin down an octave, and now we are hearing C1, and the fifth above that, and the octave, which is still C2, and then the, and then the third above that as well. So if we wanted to, we could add 12 to all of these to replicate the rest of our chord voicing. That gives you a little bit of a picture of what we're dealing with here. Now, if you're finding it a little bit difficult to visualize this, don't worry about it. I get that, it totally can be difficult. So one little trick is to add another MIDI effect rack after this MIDI effect rack we're working in, open up key mode there as well. And then you can always go over here and see what chords are being triggered by the chord trigger that you're creating. So now I'm triggering C1, G2, C3, and E3. 
If I went back here and changed this back so it wasn't transposing the original note at all, then we would be right here. So while you're programming these chord triggers, if you want a little bit of a visual reference, you can add a MIDI effect track. One of my favorite ways to do this as well, if you have Ableton Live standard or suite and you have access to the sampler plugin, is to go here, open up your instrument. If it's a simpler instance, right click on it and convert it to sampler. Then click on zone right here. Now you can also see the chord input here. This is really great because no matter where you scroll, you're still gonna see this floating over the top. That's really helpful so you're not scrolling back and forth. But again, if you don't have one of those higher tiers of live to be able to see that, you can just add another MIDI effect rack and get the same functionality with a little bit more scrolling back and forth. Now that we have a single chord trigger created, you guessed it, we're gonna repeat this process for as many other chord triggers as we need. To do this, it's simple to just Command D or Control D if you're on Windows to copy and then drag the note to wherever you'd like it to be. So let's program this next chord trigger to F2. I'm gonna change the name of the rack so that I can keep them straight. So now we're triggering a chord on F2. And again, we have full control over this chord separately from the other because all of these instances of the MIDI effects are actually unique between the two. So we can program this chord trigger to do whatever we want it to do. It's totally distinct and different, uh, separate from the other chord trigger. So that sounds just fine. We could go here, duplicate it again, G2. Here we'll program a chord trigger there. Now obviously this voicing sounds really weird for that. So we could bring this back down. And let's say that we actually want this to have a lower bass note. So we could either keep the octave in there and then add a negative 12. Or if we wanted to, we could shift everything down using this pitch plugin here and then accommodate for that transposition here with the individual note shifts. Now you do have blend control over how loud all of these generated notes are inside of Ableton Live, which is actually a really cool feature. So if you need a note to be a little less or a little more prominent, you can adjust these. Any number below one is going to be less prominent. Any number above one is going to be more prominent than the original note. So whatever velocity you play in is gonna get scaled up or scaled down relative to this number. It's a cool feature that you don't get in main stage. So a little bit of a leg up here when it comes to programming these chord triggers. So now we have three chord triggers programmed. And they are funky and they're just doing their own thing. And that's the process here. It, it's pretty straightforward once you understand the mechanics of it. The worst part of it is that you have to do some math to figure out the interval ranges that you need to see. That's why I really do like being able to see the note display in real time with this method or via a MIDI effect rack. Now you might be thinking, okay, this is doable, but it seems like it's gonna take a lot of time. And that's true, programming chord triggers one at a time, creating each chain from scratch, every single time takes forever. But you're not gonna have to do that because we've created a chord trigger preset for Ableton Live that includes pre-programmed triggers for every key on the keyboard. It's simple to use, easy to get started with. It allows you to just choose the notes that you need and then program the chord triggers. So let me show you how to interact with that now that you understand the basics of how chord triggering in Ableton Live works. So you have every note on the key bed already laid out for you from A negative one all the way up to C4. Each of these racks doesn't have a chord trigger already programmed to it by default. It's just gonna pass through the notes that you play. But you've got the pitch plugin and the chord plugin ready to go so you can program chords really quickly, really easily. And then up at the top here, we also have a high note pass through, which is turned off by default. We've got it muted here, but if you want, you can also pass through the high notes. So anytime you want to program some chord triggers using the Sunday Sounds chord trigger preset, the first thing you need to do is figure out what notes you need to program. So we've got the octave ranges color coded here to make it a little easier. So let's say for us, we just need to program chords, let's say in the C1 range, maybe up through B1. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just remove all the other uh, notes here that I know I don't need. 
This is a good practice because it keeps things as efficient as possible. And then all other MIDI is gonna be blocked by this MIDI rack. We're only going to send MIDI through to the instrument on these notes right here. So now I can go ahead and program the chord triggers that I need. So I could add the fifth here. Maybe I don't need C sharp. Let's say that I'm in the key of C, so I could rem remove that as well. And then let's say that I want a really nice low D for some reason, I don't know, maybe a really dramatic two chord. So I could add an octave above that. There we go. And then we'll add, let's go up to three octaves there. I don't need D sharp one, so I'm gonna remove that. Maybe I don't need E1 here. I'm gonna to go to the F chord. We'll add an octave, two octaves. There we go and so on and so forth. I could program this whole chord trigger. It's really a lot faster to do this process subtractively rather than creating this really complex MIDI effect rack from scratch every time. So we could start over here and program in whatever key we'd like as far up or down the key range as you need to go. You don't have to build this from scratch every time. So if you'd like to, we're gonna include a link to download this chord trigger preset from Sunday Sounds. There's a link in the description. Just sign up for our newsletter. You'll get an immediate download of this preset and a huge library of free worship patches that we've put together for Ableton Live. Now, I've tried to make this process simple and I think that you can get really great results programming chord triggers in Ableton Live. But if you're coming from a main stage background or if the idea of chord triggers is a new one to you in general, I know it can be a little bit confusing. So if you have any questions about how to approach it, when to use chord triggers, or maybe the mechanics or logistics of using this preset rack that we're giving to you, leave a comment. We'd be happy to help and answer any questions that might come up. Now, if you found this video helpful, or if you're excited about this chord trigger preset, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment to let us know. That is really a great way to help us and it supports the channel. So we really appreciate that feedback and that support. Lastly, if you're a worship keys player or a worship leader, consider sharing this video with a friend of yours who's using Ableton Live that you think might also enjoy it. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because we put out a new tutorial every single week. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.